It is good to be in church today. Hey, I want to let you know, I was thinking, well, there's, two, uh, okay, I don't know, all your stories. <laughs> but today, I know of two very dedicated people. Their house was, their house wasn't flooded, but the area all around where they live, they live off like the frontage road over at Campo 99, flooded. And they're like, dang it, I'm getting to church. So they called somebody, they put on their galoshes, you know, their huge rain boots, and they carried their clothes. They put their, their, their nice Sunday church day clothes in a bag so they could walk out and get to church. That's dedication. <laughs> I love Lifeline Church. You guys are committed, dedicated people in all aspects of your, I, I know your, some of your stories and you would say, no, that's not me. But can I tell you, if you keep showing up and you keep pressing in, that's you. Jesus is calling your name. And we believe that God has a plan and a purpose and a message of hope, encouragement, and love for every single person. So good morning to everyone who's watching online. Uh, good morning, obviously, to everyone who's in the house. Uh, we have a mission here at the church. You can say it with me if you know it. It's to be a lifeline. And we do that by leading people into becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. In every area and every space of our life, we want to know how to serve Jesus. Not only serve Jesus, but he wants to minister to us. He has things for us. He wants to speak to to us. And so in all those hard places of life, we want to know how to hear the voice of the living God and, and be present in the places and the communities that we find ourselves that we're not alone, but there's a family of believers that we're a part of. There are people who have gone before us. There are people here with us. There are people who we're going to impact for the future. And then God is with us through it all. And so we want to bring that to our community. That's, that's our mission here at the church is to really put Jesus uh, in every part of your life because he's the difference maker. Amen. Uh, so you can follow along with us. We do have notes. If you got the uh, bulletin, it, some people decline it. I get it. I throw paper in the trash. Um, uh, also, <laughs> inside, so if you're a paper note taker, there's notes and you can fill in the blanks. Uh, if you're digital, we've got the YouVersion Bible app. You can get on there, click on the events tab, follow along, find Lifeline Church, uh, and, and do it that way. So uh, do that. Also, YouVersion is a great place to do Bible reading plans. So if you're like, I want to get into scripture, I want to start reading the word, but I don't know where to start, they've got great plans and you can read with friends. So we highly recommend YouVersion. Um, and then Growth Track, step one starts today. So if you've been coming... I know we're going to have a full house and growth track day. It's going to be amazing. Uh, but growth track is really, it's the front door. It's the on-ramp to get connected to the church. So if you're looking around, you're like, I really want to, to get to know people. I want to be involved with life groups. Uh, I want to serve. I want to find out more information. Growth track is it. If you grew up going to church, you heard about like a membership class. This would be that equivalent. Uh, so it's a, it's a great place. There's plenty of room. I said it's a full house, but there's plenty of room. Uh, so stick around for that. Do that. You can leave your kids in the class room. We have an experience going on for them uh, while, while you go through the class, and we'd love to do that. Pastor Elliot and I are taking you through step one. We find out about the church. Okay, we're in a series, a middle of a series called Refresh. And it's kind of all about uh, like that refresh button on your browser. And you, you guys power go out at all during the last two or three weeks? Ours went out a bunch of times. We're in Woodbridge and all the transformers were blowing. And it's like, okay. okay. Uh, it went out for eight hours and then it came back on. And then it went out for 17 hours and then it came back on. And then it went out for like 30 hours and then it came back on. It just couldn't make up its mind, you know? Uh, so... That was fun. And so every time it would connect, our internet is like, you have to re-plug in the Wi-Fi password into our TV. And we didn't reset our Wi-Fi password, so it's like 3M. It's a bunch of numbers and letters and jargon. I didn't want to say it. You guys are going to write it down and get in our Wi-Fi. It's weird. Not going to happen, but I got weird about it, OK? Ah, oh, you saw it. <clears throat> Well, what would, so like everything reset and some on one day my phone people were trying like all of a sudden they were trying to send me pictures and photos and bitmojis and gifts and all the things and you guys ever have I have a Samsung so all you iPhone people are gonna be like it's because you're a Samsung that's not it it's because the internet was dumb uh, but it, it'll give you that it'll tell you that you got a message but it'll say downloading and it'll give you the circle and it won't show you the message and then I would try and send stuff and it just kept circling like I'm gonna send and then it would tell me it, it, it would tell me that it failed but then people would reply to my message and like it didn't fail it went through like come on uh, really so the only way to get hit the refresh button and have it work is to have a good connection if you don't have a good connection in the first place you can keep hitting that refresh button but you're not it's not it's just gonna keep spinning it's never gonna actually take you to the place you want to go so that's kind of what this series is about um, the theme scripture for the whole series is out of Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6 which says trust in the Lord with all your heart 
Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Uh, and then kind of our overarching statement is that without connection, there is no refreshing. We have to be connected in order to get the refreshing. So today, I want to do something real simple, and I'm just going to walk us through the Psalm uh, 23. It's a very popular psalm. Uh, it's where David is talking about the Lord as his shepherd, and he's equating shepherds and sheep uh, between us and, and the Creator. So I, I know that it's not going to be earth-shattering and ground breaking revelation, but I do know that it is going to be absolutely refreshing for each and every one of our souls to be reminded of who our God is and what we can expect and anticipate from him and in our lives as we draw close to the good shepherd. Amen. Anybody need a good refreshing for their soul, a good reminder of who our savior is, of who our God is? Because when I can I when we put our eyes and we fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy sat before him, endured this cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the Father, when we fix our eyes on Him, everything else begins to make sense. All the striving does cease because we're in relation with the living creator God who loves us. And so that's what I want to do. I want to walk us through that psalm and kind of just, I've, I know I'm being, I'm probably like kiddish, but I do, I'm going to have some pictures up on the screen. And some of us are visual learners. Some of us are like those kinesthetic and then, you know, auditory. So hopefully we'll hit all the facets of learning today. But the images are, are designed to just draw us into a visualizing God in a way maybe we haven't before or haven't in a long time where it's a place where we can just be refreshed. And if you hate him, you can tell me that later and say that was awkward. Okay. Uh, but in Psalm 23, this is, this is what I promise will happen. The relationship between a shepherd and a sheep reminds us of who God is and who we are in relation to him. Because our life really only makes sense when we're in the right context with who our God is. And when we see him right and we see us right between that, then we have a full picture of who we are and we can walk confidently in the world. And then Psalm 23, it also touches the emotions and the feelings that we all experience. There's a lot, if you stop and think about it and you consider and you visualize what's happening there, there's emotion in that Psalm that we all experience and, and it speaks to that. Um, and so what I, before we get into that, I want to look at something that Jesus said to his followers. So in John Chapter 10, verse 27. John is probably one of my favorite gospels because he talks about what Jesus did, but beyond that, he goes into the emotion of how it felt. Like he's a, he's a deep thinker. And so when you read the scripture, but you want to connect emotionally, John is one of the best places to get the heart of God through that. So John 10, 27, Jesus is talking, he's talking to his followers and he says this, <clears throat> it's both an encouragement and kind of a distinguishing thing. It's an encouragement for those who are listening and in, who are engaging, but it's a distinction from those who are following at a distance and not really 100% into who Jesus is. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. <clears throat> I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one can snatch them away from me for my father has given them to me and he is more powerful than anyone else. No one can snatch them from the Father's hand. <laughs> I love that. He says he, he is more powerful than anything else. There is nothing else in all of the world that will be able to snatch a follower of Jesus from the hand of the Father if we're leaning in and we're in the middle of the sheepfold. But he also says, if you're not... He doesn't say it, but he says it in that if you're, if you're on the outside and you're not, you're not with me, you can be snatched. And I'm not all-powerful for you because you haven't leaned in. And his desire is that he wants to be that all-powerful protector for us. So let's jump into Psalm 23. We'll just go to verse 1. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. And so... The, Instead of jumping to just, I have all that I need, I want to talk about who the Lord is, because it says, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, who the heck is that? And what does that mean for me? So these are just to quote a few scriptures, but he is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people. We're the sheep of his pasture. He is good, and his unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness endures to all generations, which is why you and I are here today, because his faithfulness has endured through the, the wickedness and the, the futility and of all generations, we still stand today because he is faithful and because he calls his people. The earth is his everything in it. He laid, it's, the scripture says, he laid the earth's foundation. And then I love this, he's the king of glory. 
He's the king of glory. He is strong and mighty. He is invincible in battle. That's what the scripture declares. We read about, we, we sang about that today. He's invincible in battle. He spoke everything into existence and he has given life to everything that was created. He shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot extinguish him. That's who the Lord is. That's who my shepherd is. The Lord is my shepherd. He is the one watching it. That's who's watching out for me. That's who's keeping me in the sheepfold. And then it says, I have all that I need. First, I want to, so the Lord, and then I have all that I need. But I want to talk about the shepherd because the shepherd has charge of the sheep. The shepherd is responsible to and for the provision of the flock. Which also means there's a, there's a genuine sense of compassion and love that he has for a flock. You think about... <clears throat> Like, anybody got animals? You got a dog, you got a cat, you got a herd of dogs, you got like four dogs, three cats, you take them on walks. <laughs> they've all, they've got their personality, and they're all different, and they have a name, and you care for them. They're your pet. And then you back up and you think about a shepherd. Sure, you know, there's a shepherd, there's a whole flock of sheep, like, oh, I mean, every sheep looks the same, <laughs> unless it's black. A black sheep, white sheep, a spotted sheep, sheep. Oh, that's dumb. Okay, um, they all look the same. But the shepherd, the shepherd can distinguish one sheep from another sheep because he spends all his time with them. And, it, and he may or may not name them, but he, he knows them. He knows their personality. He knows their tendencies. And so he watches like a sheep that has a tendency to stay on the outside. He's watching that sheep. And you better believe he's doing everything he can to get that sheep in the middle because he knows it's the safest spot for it. The shepherd, there's a genuine compassion that fills the heart of the shepherd for the entire flock. It's the flock as a whole. Whole, and then each sheep as an individual. So th there's, there's a love that, that, that's there. And then it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. So here's the deal. If the Lord calls himself the shepherd, then we in his eyes are our sheep, okay? Whom he desires, there's a genuine desire in our Savior's heart to care for us. He loves to care for us. And I don't, we've heard this maybe, but sheep in the wild are pretty helpless. I don't know a ton. I mean, I didn't grow up on a sheep farm or anything. Uh, recently, I, we just started going to a farm. Impact Sports has like a family farm that I started taking my kids to, and they've got animals. They're not raising them to, to, to they're just pets, okay? Um, but they're on, on the farm, these pets, there's a handful of goats, there's two pigs, there's a mini cow, so cute. It's not a big cow, it's a mini cow. And then there's two sheep. First of all, sh goats, that bah sound, actually is more like a goat, because if you've ever heard a real sheep, they're like, it's a weird, deep, dark. They've got a dark, uh, I can't even do the sound they make, it's different, okay? But the sheep, here's the deal, this is, <clears throat> Like I knew sheep, I don't, there's chatter right here and I can't tell what it is. <laughs> okay, but there, so on the farm, there's not a shepherd, okay? Uh, and there, there's farm hands, but there's a pecking order in that because they're all in one big pen and then they've got their little stalls, but they leave the stall and they go frolic around. Then there's a pecking order. So when it's feeding time, if they, they'll put, we've been there, so they put a big bale of hay on the ground and they, at first they were just doing that, but they were noticing that the sheep weren't getting any food. They couldn't. And so they started separating them. They did, they would put the goats over here and they would put the pigs over here. Actually, the pigs and the goats got together because they're both crazy. Okay, so the pigs and the goat, they can fend for themselves. Uh, but the cow and the sheep, they would put together. And what would happen is the cow and the sheep are slower eaters. So they're still working on their bale of hay. The goats finish it. They completely destroy it. There's trampling all over it. There's still stuff there, but they're looking for the easy stuff. So they come running around the other side and they sneak in. And what they do is they butt the sheep out, the pigs and the goats, both. They'll butt the sheep out of the way. And so the sheep will completely, I watched it happen. The sheep will completely back up and starve because they're not aggressive enough to get, they're not going to push back. And so I was watching what would happen. And the cow, he's a mini cow and he doesn't know that he's huge compared to the other animals. So he had, to, he actually had to learn from the goats that he could use his head and headbutt things. But once he learned that, the sheep realized that the cow was the safest place to be. 
So when all of the animals came rushing after the hay bale, the sheep, once, once they stood back and kind of looked for a second, and then they walked around and they found the cow, and they sandwiched themselves right up next to the cow, and they're a little bit shorter, so he's eating here, and they're eating right behind him. So sheep need a shepherd. They need a place of security and safety. They need someone who watches out for them. Guys, that's as terrible as that might sound. That's how the Lord created us. <laughs> we, we need, you know, some of us might act more like goats or pigs and, and we can bully and, and get our way in, but not at every space and place in life. There are places in life where you can do that sometimes and then you enter a, a place or a season or a space in life where you just can't, it's not going to work anymore. Like you've reached the end of what you can can do and now you're that sheep and you're looking for safety and you're looking for security you're looking for a place where you can thrive and grow and you don't have to keep striving the Lord created us to need a shepherd and he wants to be our shepherd he wants to care for us uh, verse 2 says this he lets me rest in green meadows he leads me beside peaceful streams okay so sheep must lie. Oh, this isn't all inclusive facts about sheep, by the way, because I'm not a shepherd. Um, these are some facts I did look up, and I'm giving you not an exhaustive list, but they're in, in different facets and places of life. This is how sheep operate, okay? Sheep must lie down to rest and relax while they chew the cud or while they, while they eat their grass, hay, whatever it is. They need to lie down and rest because this helps their food digest right. But here's the thing. Sheep won't rest unless their shepherd is near. Those sheep couldn't eat unless they were near the cow when everybody was feeding at the same time. And then they had to go away away from the goat so that they could rest. Uh, this helps their food digest, right? And it's only then when they're in the presence or the company of their shepherd, they know their shepherd is nearby, that they feel safe from enemies or any bully sheep. You, you guys ever been nervous and, oh, okay, um, nervous and tried to eat something. Like you're going into a presentation or you're starting a new job or it's your first day of school. Uh, you're going to try a life group for, for a first time, but it's like around mealtime and you can't, you try and eat breakfast or you're trying to eat lunch and your stomach is just in those yucky butterflies and it, it creates a tension. And so you cannot eat because you are not at rest. Your body can't handle it. And some of us power through like, I'm just going to do it anyway because I need the energy. And then you probably we get it later because you're all, whoa, 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 whoa. you know, because your body's like, it's trying to process too much at the same time. And so sheep, they, they need a place to rest in order to do that. Now the good shepherd, what he does, a good shepherd will find grassy fields where his sheep can eat to their heart's content. And then he gives them the space to eat and to rest. So in other words, he doesn't just bring them there and say, okay, you know, like moms, eat fast, come on, let's go, we gotta go out the door, let's go, let's go, we're already late. Ah, you know, rushing your kids, you know, wonder like they can't poop later because they didn't, they didn't even chew all their food, you know? <laughs> okay. Um, that's not what he does. He, he, the, the, a good shepherd leads us to a place where we can be filled, and then we can, we can chew it, we can digest it, we can process it. And it's not until we've had that space to do that that he's going to try and move us on to a different space in life. That's what a good shepherd does. So you ever, I'm trying to relate this to our life, have you ever had the best laid plans and they just got wrecked? <laughs> Uh, this is December. Let's just go back last month. December for us and for a lot of people I know was referred to as a raging dumpster fire. Anybody? <laughs> um, from, for us, from the week before Thanksgiving all the way through the first week of January, we were, someone in our family was sick um, and, and dealing with stuff. And it was... The, I realized I was not designed to live in a gray place. I need sunshine in my life. And so there was all the darkness and the grayness, and I couldn't go outside, and it was, I could go outside. I just didn't want to, because that wasn't pleasing to me. Uh, it was cold and wet, and I, I, me personally, I began to feel very like, oh, this is this is, I don't, end, I'm not enjoying my life right now. Is it just, I, there were things I wanted to do and I felt like I couldn't. And then the week before Christmas, our whole family got knocked over with whatever dumb flu that was. Okay. And we're just laid out on the couch. We had plans. We had things we wanted to do. And it was like, we couldn't, it was a raging dumpster fire. Everything we had planned didn't happen. Okay. And here's, here's me. I don't want to stop 
I want to keep going and I want to accomplish my plans. Part of it is because if I set out a plan and I didn't accomplish it, I'm some kind of a failure, even though some of those things were beyond my, ex, you know, beyond, I couldn't plan for that. I, I, there was no way I knew it was coming. But I want to make up for lost time. Anybody? You want to make up for lost time? Because you feel like you can't, you just can't let that be undone. So I don't want to lose time. I want to keep going and I want to accomplish those plans. I want to eat on the run to make up for lost time. I want to become extra busy in order to, to repair the past or whatever. I don't want to process. And then on top of all of it, guys, my husband who hates our cat, really loves our cat, he died the day after Christmas. I know, feel sorry for us. No, just kidding. <laughs> The day after Christmas, well, actually, we're in the middle of the raging flu. We're dying on our couch, all of us. And then I noticed on Tuesday night that my kitty looks sick. And I'm like, that's so weird. He's all walking like that. And then he drank a bunch of water. And I was like, okay, cool. And then I had to clean the litter box. <clears throat> and so I clean out the litter box. And I noticed <laughs> Wednesday, he doesn't, he doesn't drink or eat anything. And I was like, that's interesting. Oh, he just doesn't feel well. Okay, guys, on Sunday, this is Christmas Day, he hasn't eaten, he hasn't drank, he hasn't pooped in six days. I know a thing or two about cats, he's not going to live. So on, oh, but it was really sad, because in our hearts and in our minds, you know, Harvey was 13, his name was Harvey, he was 13. Uh, we had him for 10 years, but we thought, you know, we had another five years with him. He was just going to slowly grow old and die. Guess what? He got sick, and it was time. So we took him to the vet day after Christmas. The kids said goodbye. We had to put him down. So just, I didn't want to process the law. It's embarrassing a little bit how much I cried over a cat. <laughs> but I loved him, okay? Um, I didn't want to process the loss or the disappointment. It was a little bit embarrassing, and I know that's just, that's just an animal, but some of us have, have real people or real things or real relationships that have been severed or cut or there's been a disappointment. And a lot of times we don't want to process it. We don't want to slow down to, to, to experience that loss or to experience that pain. But Jesus wants to bring us to a place where we can continue to eat and rest and let that digest and move through our system before he takes us into the next place because he wants us he wants us healthy he wants us whole and so he creates space for us to do that and so for us i was thinking you know as i look back i was like i got more family time than i would have had we not all got super sick <laughs> cuz together as a family you know is that enjoyable do i wish that on anybody no but in the meantime and when i shifted my perspective it was like i'm getting you know 100% family time we're all miserable together so we're getting to share in this pain and we're creating memories and experiences that we wouldn't have otherwise done we would have been busy and on the go and probably you ever get stressed out anxious and so you just take it out on the person closest to you <laughs> over the holidays it's the best um <clears throat> So that didn't, that didn't, that didn't happen. Okay. So, th so there's that. So though I may rush myself, this is what I want you guys to hear. Though I may rush myself, Jesus doesn't champion that. He knows what I need and he sits with me in that place of rest. So the next time you feel disoriented by life because it's not going your way, remember instead that picture that was up there, you know, the shepherd is playing the harp in those peaceful meadows, and that's the place where he wants to lead you to. And you can say these words, I give you all my worries. Help me relax and trust you. And you know, we want to say it on the go. So if you're practicing, yeah, just, just say it on the go. But as you get better at it, maybe you'll just sit on the couch for a minute and think about, Lord, I, I really, I, I want to get better. I give you all my worries. Would you help me relax and just trust you? <clears throat> and you sit there for a minute. You don't have to sit there all day, but just sit there for a minute and see if the Lord kind of does anything in your heart or your mind or your brain, your emotions, kind of washes over you a refreshing. And then the next thing he talks about is peaceful streams. He, he leads me to peaceful streams. Timid sheep... <clears throat> are easily frightened by noisy, rushing rivers. Now, this is penned by David, who lived in Israel. So there's mountains and valleys and peaks, and a shepherd is usually taking sheep on a journey because they start in one place where, the, where there's fields, but as they go through the seasons, the, sh the sheep need to be moved around in order to keep finding food. So as they're moving around, they have to get water, and there's you know rivers and, and streams. And so timid sheep don't generally want to go to a rushing, raging... It may, they're already nervous, okay? They can't even eat unless the shepherd is there. And then you're going to take them to the Truckee River and say, drink. Not going to happen. 
Like they're not going to do it. And so what the shepherd does is he knows the way around to find that place of a, it may be a raging river up here, but down here there's more of a peaceful stream where they can drink from. Because on their own, a, a, a timid sheep is going to go find a mud puddle. Oh, this looks good. And it's, it's full of mud, it's full of parasites, it's full of germs, it's full of disease, but it's quiet. And the sheep feels safe there. And so for the sheep, the sheep will drink what is harmful because it feels better. Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? You ever just want to settle for what's easiest even though you know it isn't the best? I know not rushing into that relationship will be better in the long run, but I don't want to be lonely and I need help right now. Ah! <laughs> A little muddy water probably won't kill me. You know, it's just a little bit muddy. I know I should take the extra time on that project that my boss asked me to, to, to do, but I don't want to explain to my boss why I need more time. So if I take a couple shortcuts, nobody will probably notice. A little muddy water won't hurt me. When you, and this, this is what happens. In our shortcuts, we feel attention. You know it's there. You just try and there's nothing. There's no tension. Like, it's good. There's a tension. There's an inward pull to take the harder route, to go a little farther and to find out what's good. But here's the thing. We don't really know if the good we can see in our future, the good we're hoping for in our future, is are we actually going to get it? So the question is, is if I keep going, is that actually going to become a reality for me? Or if I just going to keep going and keep finding struggle and keep finding pain and keep finding hardship and keep being afraid? So I'd rather just settle back here. And the answer is yes, Jesus doesn't want you drinking from the mud puddles of life. He doesn't. And he doesn't want us living in fear, running away from what's good for us. Guys, Jesus will take us on the longer way around to find what is good. He will. He will take us on the longer way around to find what is good. And this is the cool thing is he knows where it is and he knows where to find it. He knows where it is and he knows how to find it. He knows how to get you there. So when you want to settle, because I know we've all been there, when you want to settle, instead pray this prayer, Lord, call my heart and lead me to a quiet place with you. Lord, call my heart and lead me to a quiet place with you, because in that quiet place, the Lord will remind you of the picture He put in your brain, and that remind that that picture, if He puts it there, is a reminder that that's where I'm taking you. You can trust me. I know it'd be easier to settle. I know it would be easier to stop short. I know this area seems good, but can I tell you, son? Can I tell you, daughter? There's something around the corner that's better if you can just keep hang on. If you can just keep going. Verse 3 says this, He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to His name. Renewing my strength. So I found this very interesting. Sometimes a sheep, so when they're going around to find grassy fields or they're finding water, they've got to go up those steep cliffs, those steep rocky cliffs, and the shepherd has to lead the way. What's cool is the shepherd has already been there, so the shepherd knows where, where the sides are, are questionable. So he, the shepherd is going to get on the outside, and he's going to keep the sheep on the inside. But what happens is, when, <laughs> you, have, you ever felt like a nervous, darting sheep, where you're like, you're going somewhere with people, and then you freak out, and you just back off, and you're like, no, I'm not going in, and then you kind of just peel off on your own. Those ones that peel off on their own, because fear, anxiety, whatever, they sink in, they roll off the cliff. <laughs> Great. And when they roll off the cliff, a sheep, it, its wool coat is so heavy, if it flips over upside down on its back, it can't get back up. So it's stuck in that rocky side of the cliff, unable to flip itself back over. And what happens is the blood will come draining out, so it doesn't even have any, it loses all feeling in its legs, so it can't even use its legs anymore. And if no one comes to its rescue, it will die, because it can't get back up. So here's a question. Has life ever knocked you down enough that you just wanted to roll over and stay in that place of misery and sadness? <laughs> you were on your way to somewhere you felt like in life, and it was going, it was going well. You were making it. There, there may have been a few rough things and a few difficult things, but you kept going. You kept moving forward. And then there was just that one thing, that one more thing, and that was it. It was enough to knock you over, and, and that emotion of, gosh, are we ever going to make it? You know, am I ever going to get there? And that one thing, it just, it knocks you over long enough that you kind of, you just, just think everything in you powers down. You know, I've, I've been there. Everything in you powers down. You don't have the emotional energy or equity to, to re-engage with relationships. You don't want to plug in anymore because you have to restart. It feels like it's going to be too much work. 
No, this, this, I love this. Whenever a sheep is missing, the shepherd searches until he finds it. Because remember, he knows everyone in his flock. And he knows the ones who get weird. <laughs> we all get weird, okay? I'm not saying like, you're like, oh, I'm the one who gets weird. Me too. We all do it, okay? He knows the sheep that have a tendency to, to wander away. He knows the attitude. So if a, if a, if a herd or a flock, they're not herd, whatever. If the flock is moving together and the, the shepherd is noticing that one is kind of like, you know, it's still moving, but it's like getting weird. You know, the shepherd, Jesus has his eye on that sheep. The shepherd has his eye on that sheep. And so when the sheep finally ends up in the ditch, you better believe the shepherd goes looking for it. He's responsible for the sheep. Not only is he responsible for the sheep, he loves that sheep. That sheep has a name. That sheep has a personality. He goes looking for it. So he, he goes, he searches until he finds it. And this is what's cool. He gently turns the sheep over. No, not gently. Him. Ooh, it's heavy. And then he massages the legs until the blood comes rushing back to it. Ah! So when you feel like life has flipped you over and you're laying in the ditch and you just don't care, you do care, but it's just too hard to re-engage. The shepherd comes and he finds you and he begins to massage those places that need the blood flowing again so that you can get back up and keep doing life. And that's, that's a deep thing. And I will say this. I'm genuinely okay with emotion. <laughs> uh, but for those of us who wish we didn't have emotion or we, we didn't have feelings or we just wish we could keep going and not ever have to deal with that, the Lord wants to minister to you in that place. So man or woman, I don't care what our gender is. The Lord has created us with emotion and he speaks to us and he ministers to us in that place. And so that massaging that's the Lord drawing close, and he's working some stuff out. He's pressing deep, and, and, he's moving, and he's bringing things to the surface. And so I would say this, just don't be ashamed of that. Um, and we talk about, we're really good at Lifeline about being, we're getting better at it. We're always striving to be better at it. But to be in community with people where we can be real with who we are. And we can be real in the face of other people and find love and joy and peace and security because all of us have been through it together. And so we're really good at working to share our stories so that we find a place of community because that's how the Lord wants to help us process some of that stuff. So Jesus, guys, is on a mission to find all of his lost sheep, all of them. He doesn't plan on losing. Remember what we read in John 10? He doesn't plan on losing any of them. I will not lose any of them. They belong to my Father, and no one can snatch them from my hand. So when you're flipped over lying in the ditch, Jesus is on the, he's on the move, and he's looking for you, and he's going to find you. And when he finds you, he's going to flip you over, he's going to massage you, and he's going to bring you back into the sheepfold. Some of us need to receive that today because you feel like, I'm too far, I'm too far, I don't want to, I don't want to. And Jesus says, I'm, I will not lose you. Let me bring you back in. And then there are others who, they don't know that there is a good shepherd. We, we know people who have no idea that there's a shepherd who's out looking for them. But we, the people of his flock, the people of his pasture, we know where they are. We know where they're hiding. And we're on mission with Jesus to find those lost sheep, to flip them over, to massage them, and to bring them back into the sheephold. And so I would say this, we're a church on a mission. If you haven't gone through Growth Track today and you've been thinking about it, you've been on the fence, you've been dancing around it, today's your day. Become a part of the search and rescue team. Become equipped to rescue and 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 provide not all the answers, but provide hope for your friends and your family and your coworkers and the places and spaces of life where you see people and you, you know you don't have all the answers, but you know Jesus and you just need a little bit of help of getting them to see the Jesus that you know, we can help you. We love to help you because we're a church on a mission. We're on co-mission with Jesus to find the lost sheep. It says, uh, he talks about, he guides me. Sometimes stubborn sheep refuse to follow their shepherd. They go their own way, but only the shepherd knows the way to reach green pastures. Okay, so a mature sheep, what will happen is if they take the same route all the time, a mature sheep might figure out the route. Like, I know this is where we're going. <laughs> I can do this on my own. I've been there before. I can do it again. Here's the thing. There was a drought last year, and your shepherd's not taking you to the same place because he knows where the green pastures are, and you're going to go find it in your past. And he's saying, I'm not taking you there. I'm taking you over here. And so that stubborn sheep goes out on its own. <laughs> and that's, that's what the, the staff is for. 
the staff, the, sh- the shepherd can see that sheep going over there, and he uses the staff to bring it in and says, stay close to me. I know where I'm taking you. I know where there's green pastures. I know the plans I have for you. I know where you're going to find the fulfillment of the promise I've given to you. <laughs> and it's a little bit annoying. You know, you feel like you have a staff crooked against your neck. But it's, it's love. And I would say this, that's, you know, when the, when the church, when your friends, when your family get on you about, are you going to go through a life group? Are you going to be involved in a life group? And you're like, no, get off my back. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> We're like, but come on. <laughs> It's because within the flock and close to the shepherd is where we find refreshing. It's where we find connection and and, and that that stuff we need for our soul. So there are some of us, uh, there are some times in our lives where after a while we feel like we know better. You know, we've been following Jesus for a while. We got got this down. You know, we're master. Uh, I know know Jesus' patterns. I got this. I can... I can find the next good thing at my own. Yeah, I love Jesus. I serve Jesus, but I'm going to go. I'm going to be a little disconnected and just go, go out on my own. I don't need to stay with the back. I don't need to stay with the family. I can go my own way for a while and I'll be fine. So when you think you got this, <laughs> this is probably when you're not going to pray because you already got it. But when you think you got this and you feel good about going out on your own or going your own way, I would, I would ask that the Lord would remind us of this. Lord, help me obey and follow you, even when it's not easy. And it becomes not easy because we feel like we know what's best, or we have a dream and a passion and a vision, and we want to go and we want to get there. And so it becomes not easy anymore to submit our desires to the Lord. Because we've learned we can trust him. He is good. He will take care of us. He will lead us. And so because I know all of that, I can branch out on my own. I can, I can co-lead with you, Jesus. And Jesus says, I'll bring you with me, but I'm your leader. Please submit to me. And so that would be my, my prayer for us, is when we feel like we got this, <laughs> don't. Uh, you know, ask the Lord, to help. Lord, I want to obey you. And so I, even though this is hard, I'm submitting my passions I'm submitting my plan. I'm submitting the place I want to go because I want to go where you're going. And if there are steps along the way that I'm going to bypass, I don't want to. I want to do it your way. Verse 4, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, or the valley of the shadow of death. For you are close beside me, your rod and staff comfort and protect me. I will not be afraid. So the path to the highland meadows in David's time of shepherding led through that dark valley. So it was like up a crevice, dark valley. And it was a place of danger. That's where the wolves and the lions and the bears, they would hide in those places. And so as they're coming through, they would attack and pounce the sheep. Okay, so the shepherd knew where those places were. And if the shepherd was going before them, the shepherd could throw that rod. That's why David was so good at slinging the giant, because he was was really good at, I guess he used a stone and a slingshot, but he was really good at killing bears and killing lions by flinging stones and hitting them so it it would knock them down. And it was because the shepherd went out front and killed all the enemies that then the sheep could go through that place. So when you go out on your own, you're fighting the enemies on your own. Good luck. You want to, I don't know how to, although when the mountain lions come to Lord, I like, I really want to be there. I do. I do. I don't want to get mauled. I don't want to get eaten, but I want, I like in my mind, I'm going to see the lion and it's going to be great. If you go out on your own ahead of the shepherd and you go through that dark valley, he's not there first to fight the enemy for you. So you're stuck battling the enemy out on your own. Jesus says, Be behind me. Get behind me. Let me go before you. He planned the trip for a sheep, and so together they're going to walk through every danger. Guys, there's going to be dark valleys in life where it seems like life, people, and circumstances, and strange enemies are out to get us. Sickness, confusion, darkness, relationship struggles, and there's going to be times where you feel under attack. There will be times where it feels like what's around the corner seems so uncertain and you would rather turn back. You'd rather just stay where you are or turn back to where you came from because the uncertainty of tomorrow is too much. I'm not ready. I'm not going. But if we're going with the shepherd, if we're going with him and he's leading us, then we can trust that he knows the way through and he's going to see before us and he's going he's to go before us. He is more powerful. I love that. He is more powerful than anyone else. And then it talks about your rod. So the shepherd uses his rod, that heavy club, to 
to defend the flock from enemies. And it's hours of practice that helped him, him throw to get that. And so it was both the rod and the staff. The rod is what is defeating enemies, and the staff is what is drawing the sheep closer. And so in that dark, uneasy place, I would say this, you probably don't need to go up against the enemy yourself. This is what we need to do. You need to get behind the shepherd. And getting behind the shepherd looks like Jesus. I'm seeing some enemies before me. I'm in contention, and I've got things going. I'm feeling stressed. I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling nervous. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm feeling fearful. I'm, I have this plan of answers in my heart, but it's not sitting right with me, and I don't know any other option. And so I'm getting behind you, and I'm asking you, Lord, would you show me where to go? Would you would you defeat these enemies for for me? And can I tell you that in relationship struggles, he's going to convict people of sin, not you. Yeah, you're going to drive them away and drive a huge wedge in that relationship. But if you let Jesus do it, if you go to Jesus and say, gosh, this is going on. First of all, he's going to make you repent of your sin because there's two parties in anything. And so he's going to say, okay, son, okay, daughter, I see that and I can deal with that. You got to deal with yourself. And so he's going to lead you to a place of repentance. And when you do that, he's going to convict the other person of sin. And then there will be reconciliation when you let him do the work. You're not fighting the battle. You're going to him, and he's fighting your battles for you. He's going to convict of sin. He will cause people to repent. He will cause people to confess. He will cause others to be removed from our life. You're going to pray. And you're going to ask him to defend you. You're going to confess your sin. You're going to repent. And you're going to draw closer to him. And then he's going to do some things beyond that. These are some scriptures. The Lord says, it is mine to avenge. I will repay. Don't seek revenge on your own. It is mine to avenge. I will repay. Submit that to Jesus and let him do the work. He's going to work stuff out in you. And he's going to work stuff out in them. And then it's going to be better. Here's another one. Call upon Those who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. You call upon my name and I will save you. I will rescue you. It may not look like what you think it's going to look like. Because there are things in you that he wants to do first. Every single time. If you're dealing with a person, he's going to do it in you first. There's another one. I came to give them life and life to the fullest. Life abundantly. That's what he wants. He's the good shepherd. That's what he wants. He doesn't want you out on the out finding those enemies. Verse 5, you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Prepare a table. Whew, there were these high top mountains and they were called tables. So the shepherd would leave them up to the table. And on the table there was lots of grass, but there was also killer weeds. <laughs> Um, and so what would happen is the shepherd would go first. He got there first and he would see all the goodness, but he'd also, they were bad for the sheep. If they ate them, it would poison and kill the sheep. So what he would do is he would go and he would, one by one, he'd start picking out all those weeds and he'd put it in a basket and set it aside so that in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of what could kill me, my Lord has gone before me and he has set the table and I can eat here in peace. Whew. We want that. We want to enter into the hard places, the places where we want to go, where danger is all around and it seems impossible. But when he goes first, he makes it happen. He prepares a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Even a nibble of those plants would have killed them. So how about this thought? When everything is sunny and good and you feel like you made it to the mountaintop and God is good and you have everything you need, there is peace. Remember this, Lord, sometimes I've been in danger and I didn't know it. Thank you for all the ways you protect me. You go before me and you prepare the way. And then it says, he anoints my head with oil. This was funny. Each summer, pesky nasal flies would swarm the flock and they would lay eggs in the the sheep's face. (laughs) That sounds perfect. Okay, so then the the tiny worms would hatch and they would crawl up into the, into the nasal passages. And so the sheep were like, you know, freaking out. Like they just, your dog, has your dog ever sneezed? And then they grab their paw and they're like whacking it, you know, and they're trying, trying to get it to stop. Okay. That would happen to an entire flock of sheep. And so what would happen is at the first sign of pestilence, if we're with the shepherd, the shepherd knows when it's going to happen. And so he would put this sticky anointing oil over the, the sheep's face. Feels gross. Probably you ever been anointed with oil? And then you go, what it would do is when that would it, would, it would calm and it would comfort the sheep. You ever been so irritated, frustrated, up, frustrated upset, or bothered that you stomped your feet all over and you yeah, acted like you're six? <laughs> we're probably out of the phase where we're physically stomping our feet. I don't know. Some of you guys probably slam doors. I mean, that's the same as stomping your feet. Come on. 
You get so busy, you, you know, you're so bothered that you stomp your feet and, th and throw a fit. So we pout. This is what we do. We pout. We use hurtful words. We freak out. We lash out. We become irritable when life doesn't go our way. We don't get what we want, and we can't make it stop. At the first sign of pestilence, if we're with the shepherd and we seek his help, he pours his oil over us, which settles our senses and transforms our environment. So I would say go to the shepherd and ask him to help you calm down when you feel upset or bothered before you speak a word, before you reply to that text message, before you reply to that email, before you decide that this person needs to know, you know what? I'm gonna tell go to the shepherd and let him anoint you with oil first. Let him calm your senses and help you to see clearly. And then from that point, move forward. My cup overflows. At the end of the day, <clears throat> the shepherd carefully examines each sheep for cuts and scratches. And he cleans their wounds and he applies oil to each injury. Then he speaks lovingly to his sheep while he serves them a large cup of cool water. And the sheep sink their noses into the overflowing cup and they drink all they want. We do have a good shepherd, and he is with us. He is for us, and he loves to care for us. We are his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. He doesn't just want to find us flipped over in a ditch and rescue us then. At the end of every day, he wants to look us over for those nicks and those cuts and those bruises that may begin to fester and cause damage. He wants to fix them before they become a real injury. He wants to fix them be before they come a, a wound that hinders us from moving forward. And so this year, I would say maybe a realistic, refreshing resolution could be to spend five minutes at the end of your day just sitting with the Lord. And that looks like if it's the couch, if it's the bedroom, if it's the bathroom, if it's the car, wherever it is where you can get just five minutes where it's no distractions. It doesn't necessarily have to be quiet, but it's just a place where you can spend five minutes and you run through the day. Like when you woke up and all the people you saw, all the interactions that you had, what you were grateful for. And this, this is what you would run through. Run through the day in your mind, the good and the joyful. What was good and what was joyful? What was unexpected and offensive? Where it, you, in the moment, it just kind of brushed over you, like it, it did something, but you just kept moving. But at the end of the day, you realize, oh, that hurt, hurt. That hurt more than I thought it did. Like I kept moving. Because what will happen is that hurt that you didn't think was that big of a deal, if you don't give it to Jesus, it will keep growing. And then you'll wonder, why in the world is that such a big thing? And it was because it was a little thing here, but you didn't give it to Jesus. You didn't let him look it over. You didn't let him heal it. And now it's a big thing. And so let him look at those things, the unexpected, the offensive, the difficult, and the hurtful. And then let him tend to those wounds right away. Create a daily check-in habit at the end of your day with Jesus. In the verse 6, Surely your goodness and mercy, your unfailing love, will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy. So if this was a shepherd, there are different types of shepherds and shepherding, and depending on where you are. But if it was a shepherd who was taking his sheep on a journey through the year, spring, summer, winter, fall, they're moving around the high places, the low places, the tables, moving around. In the fall... If it was the traveling shepherd, they would take their flock back home. And the sheep, after that whole year, the sheep have learned to trust and depend on their shepherd. For them, that shepherd has become good because they, that, that sheep was led from where he started all the way back in a circle, and he was cared for, he was protected, he was tended to, he was loved, he was cherished, he was known, he was sought after when he was lost. And so at the end of the year, now instead of, for those sheep who have learned that he can be trusted, instead of leading the sheep, he, he can let them run down the mountain. And because he knows it's safe ahead, he can let them run down the mountain and they can frolic and, and be free and have joy. And there's, there's, a, there's a trust that has been earned between the sheep and the shepherd that they can enjoy each other's company. They know when to come in and, and, and when to frolic and to have fun. His good care is going to get them all safely back home. That's, that's the shepherd's job. And I would say this, we are not home yet, none of us, because our home is in heaven with Jesus. And he's coming back for us. It says one day he's going to come back for us, and we're, he's going to bring us all home. For everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord, he, he's coming back. And so for those of us who had followed Jesus for some time, we know that he can be trusted. We, we've got some earned confidence in who our Savior is. We have been on journeys with him, and he has led us through. We still have to learn to trust him in those dark places. We still, we're going to go on into places that are confusing, and we have to learn to trust him the way we trusted him before. Even though we have earned confidence in who our God is, that doesn't mean we separate from him. It means we know how to get close, and we know he's going to protect us. 
Something we say around here is to just give us one year of your life. Give us one year of your life. The church is not Jesus. Lifeline Church is not Jesus. We know that. But what we do know is that we are his hands and his feet. We are his extension. We are his body and and his extension. We're a visual representation of who Jesus is on the earth. We're a community of people who are marked by his presence. We're marked by his love and we're commissioned to be on mission with him. So I would say this, if you've been dancing on the fence and you're looking to be refreshed, you, you're, you have plans for 2023, go all in. Give us one year of your life. Give Lifeline Church one year of your life. Go through growth track today. Sign up to get on a team at the end of the month. In February, join a life group and go through a life group for the whole semester. And stick around over the summer. Yeah, go on vacation, travel, but watch online, stay connected. And then we're going to, well, life groups, all the things. Give us one year. Go all in. How would this year be different if every day, this is, this is a big question. How would this year be different if every day you were refreshed by the Lord? At the end of the day, you spent those five minutes and you let him refresh you right there and then. And you belong to a family who knew your story. Because when you get weird and you get on the fr- weird is a loving term. I love the, the word weird because I'm so weird, okay? And I get weird all the time, like nervous and anxious and Ooh, I'll just stand back here. Like, I don't need to be in the middle. The, the mature sheep know that the middle is the safest place because the wolves and the bears, they can't, grab, they can't grab the sheep in the middle. They grab the sheep on the outside. So get in the middle. And all the mature sheep, this is what happens. When there's, when there's baby sheep, lambs, What do you think the moms do? They put them in the middle. Then my baby. Okay, so none of us are babies in here. We have classrooms. How many of us, if we've, re- I'm not asking you to raise your hand, recently given your life to Jesus, you're new in Christ. And the Lord does refer to that as there's an infancy stage in growing in our relationship with Jesus. And so all of the, the moms and dads and mature sheep over here, we're pushing you to the middle. And we're pushing you to the middle on purpose because there's safety and provision and protection. And you get your story known and, and you get known. And then you're, you're provided for and you're cared for and you're protected. And so get in the middle. Go all in. And the sheep look forward to going home to the shepherd's house of peace and safety where the lion and the lamb will lie down together where there will be no more sickness or darkness or night, where there will be no more tears and there will be no more sadness. But home for the sheep is always wherever the shepherd is. He's with us. He cares for us. So let's lean in this year to the relationship with our good shepherd and be refreshed. Let's pray. You guys can go ahead and close your eyes and bow your heads. Father, I thank you so much for who you are. Lord, I thank you for that imagery of you as our good shepherd and us as the sheep. Lord, in the hard reality that even though I'm independent and stubborn, I need you. And so, Father, I ask that that truth would begin to wash over all of us. For those of us who are watching online and those of us who are in the house. Lord, the truth and the reality of who we are and what we need because of how you've created us to be. And then the imagery that you are a loving and good shepherd. You don't call us sheep because you think we're dirty, dumb animals. You call us sheep because you're the good shepherd and you love us and you desire to care for us. And you want us in a flock. You want us in a family. You want us to be cared for. You want us to be known. You want us to be seen and you have a plan and a purpose for us and you're taking us somewhere. God, may we be refreshed with that truth this morning. For anybody who's in the house who hasn't given their life to Jesus and you want to be a part of the sheepfold, you want to be a part of the family, if that's you, I just want to invite you to raise your hand up into the air so we can pray with you. Amen, I see your hand. Amen, I see your hand. Amen, I see your hand. God is so good. You can just repeat this prayer after me. Father God, everybody together. Father God, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice. I believe that you are my Savior. I repent of my sin. And I call upon your name. Fill me with your spirit. And lead me to do what's right. Amen. Church, can we celebrate for everything that God is doing today?